About four months ago, I released my biped templates for Unreal Engine, and since then I've released three updates for them based on feedback from users as well as my own use. So, I figured it was a good time to make a video to demonstrate the new features that have been added since their initial release. By far the most popular request was more control over the root bone controller, this arrow here at the character's feet. Um, in the initial release, I included two options to globally enable uh, root rotation and root movement, these top two options. And what that did as a refresher is it allowed the uh, character to automatically transfer movement and rotation on the X, Y, and also the vertical Z axis. But many users wanted even more control than that. They wanted to be able to um, control the individual axes on which the movement was transferred. So I've done just that. Now, underneath Allow Root Movement, you have these three additional options where you can selectively enable or disable root movement along the X, Y, or Z axis. So I'm going to demonstrate a few examples to show you where that can be useful. Okay, in this first example, I'm going to demonstrate a walk cycle. Here is a ground plane with a black stripe in the center that represents the center line of the character's movement. So let me hit play here, and I want you to watch the uh, root controller. Okay, see how it's following the character just as it should, um, but it's also kind of doing this zigzag movement back and forth across the, uh, the black center line, and that is correct as the character shifts his weight left and right along the x-axis, it causes that root controller to make that zigzagging movement. And in some cases that is perfectly fine, but some users don't want that. They only want to transfer the forward movement of the root bone and not the side-to-side uh, -side x movement. So now with these new controls you can do just that. I can just disable the x-axis and now when I hit play, notice the root controller moves in a perfectly straight line. Very cool. So that's uh, one application of it. Let me show another. Now in this example we have a character performing this type of running jump attack. Let me play a little bit of this. There we go, the character goes along, jumps up in the air, and then lands back down. And if you notice the root controller, it follows right along with the character, goes up in the air as the character jumps, right there, and then comes back down to the ground. Now, in this case, um, I had a request from a user that said he did not want the uh, root controller to leave the ground. He wanted it to always stay fixed to the ground plane, even if the character jumps. So this is no problem now. If I select the root controller, I can just disable the Z axis and you'll see it snaps to the ground. Now let me play this. It still tracks the character's movement but always stays fixed to the ground plane, which is very nice. And one more thing I want to show is some of you might not be aware, but this root controller, all of these options that you have here, these can be animated to turn on and off at various points during the animation um, using auto key. So just for the sake of example, um, say between frames 0 and 20, I want the root bone to stay fixed at the origin. I don't want any root movement. But then at frame 20 onwards, that's when I want it to start tracking the character's movement. So how do I do that? Well, you turn auto key on, which it is. And at frame 0, I'm going to turn off Allow Root Movement. And then I'm going to scroll to frame 20, and I'm going to check Allow Root Movement. And if you notice on the timeline here, it puts a key right at frame 20. So if I back up one frame to 19, um, I still want Root Movement off there. So I'm going to back up to 19 and then uncheck Allow Root Movement. And you'll see it puts another keyframe at uh, frame 19. So now between 0 and 19 allow root movement is off and then when it hits frame 20 it automatically comes on. So if you watch the root controller there stays fixed at the origin until frame 20 and then now it starts tracking the movement. So that gives you a heck of a lot of control 
over um, how you want this root bone animated. Um, if you turn on auto key and uh, start uh, animating it at various points during the animation. Very handy. All right, one final word about the root controller. Um, say you have a super complex animation, and despite all these uh, options over here, it is still not enough control for you. Like, your animation is so complex that the only way uh, it's going to work for you is if you can just take control of the root bone and animate it yourself and place it wherever you want at various points in the animation. None of these automatic tracking options over here are going to work for you. So how do you do that? Uh, well, I've got you covered. So all you have to do is turn all of the options off, first of all, and then go over to your hierarchy tab and under link info, under the lock section, just uncheck all the locks under move and rotate. Okay. Now, when you play the animation, you'll see there's no tracking at all for the root uh, bone, but you are free to move it around wherever you want, totally independent of the animation. So that gives you the option then to, you know, turn on auto key and totally keyframe this root bone however you want it. Place it precisely wherever you want it at various points in the animation, which is very cool. It gives you a ton of control if you're a control freak or you have a, a really complex animation that you just need that type of control over the root bone. So uh, um, that should cover everybody's needs now concerning the root bone with these new updates. The other update to the templates I want to talk about concerns the character's hands, specifically on the Unreal 5 skeleton. Now, the Unreal 5 skeleton is more complex than the Unreal 4 skeleton. And one of those areas is in the uh, hands. It contains some extra bones. Now, typically on um, a character's hands, or a game character's hands anyway, you would have three bones per finger. The up Unreal 5 skeleton, however, adds an extra bone, a fourth bone called a metacarpal. Um, in biped terminology, these extra bones are called knuckles. Now, they do provide some additional dexterity in the hands. Say you were going to animate a character uh, realistically playing a piano. Now, these uh, knuckles or metacarpals would give you a little bit finer control over the spread of the fingers, for example, but in a lot of cases they can cause some problems, and that is because if you've built up a large library of biped files or uh, animation files um, that use the standard three bone setup for the hands, and you try and load that animation onto this skeleton that has four bones in the fingers, then the animation won't transfer correctly. And uh, you're going to be in for some time-consuming fixing to kind of uh, adjust the uh, bones so that they look correct. And I don't want to have to deal with that. So that's where this fix comes in. If you have the latest version of the templates, uh, you may have noticed two new templates included. Um, here I have the uh, file explorer opened, and uh, you'll see these new templates called No Knuckles. I've got, uh, you know, UE5 Female, the regular version, and then this alternate version called UE5 Female, No Knuckles, and then same for the male, the UE5 Male and UE5 Male, No Knuckles. So if you open those up and inspect the skeleton, which I've opened one of those up here, let me hide the character. Now you'll see you have a standard three bone set up for the hand instead of the extra four bones. Now I want to stress this does not break compatibility with the Unreal Skeleton whatsoever. All this does is removes your ability to animate those extra um, metacarpal or knuckle bones. They're still in there, you just uh, don't have access to animate them um, with these no knuckles version. But the uh, big positive is, is that you can load in uh, any type of biped animation that you have that uses the standard three bone setup 
which is much more common, and they will transfer over to the skeleton correctly. So that allows you to load it onto the Unreal 5 skeletons without any type of problems. You can use those animations immediately. So I use the No Knuckles versions of the uh, Unreal 5 templates almost exclusively now. So uh, I hope that explains a little bit what that uh, No Knuckles version is and if, uh, if it's right for you or not. So that just about wraps up this video. Um, if you have any more suggestions for the templates, either leave it in the comments or send me an email. And if it's at all possible, I will try to add those suggestions in a future update. But for now, uh, take care and happy animating. Bye-bye. <laughs>